we need to think of a new advert for freebets.com. Get your best betting offers from freebets.com. Yeah, that'll do. The following deals are now live. <laughs> Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with Forged Irish Style Empire Fight Store and FreeBets.com becoming quite a regular occasion this Mr Frank Charlie, it is but let's have a look at those shoes come on let's look at those shoes son look at him how can you show up a boxing with shoes on like that come on we're not having the uh, the pink bape trainers Frank no, they're, no? they're lovely pink suit shit goes with your eyes <laughs> Hey, we've got to bring the... Uh, one day we'll see you in a pair of pink vapes, Frank. Yeah, you may do. <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm good. How are you? Good, I'm good. You up my day. Thank you. I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, judging by the violation uh, I've had of your family, but hopefully good. Um, we're here for Magnificent Seven. It was good last time. Uh, as Dev said, the first time was so nice. Want to do it twice. Birmingham, that's where the first one was back in 2009 with James DeGale. Delighted to have that over the line. I'm really delighted. I thought it was the best domestic show, the most competitive domestic show uh, of 2023. And I think we're kicking off 2024 again with that format. And we've got some really good quality matches on there, some real competitive fights. And, you know... All of these fights, are some involving Queensbury fighters fighting each other, you know, guys we've got on our books, it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great night, great night of boxing for everybody. Well, let's just uh, rattle off a few fighters on the card. Joe Joyce makes his return against Cash Alley. Uh, a difficult year for him last year, but obviously boxing's a weird one. When you're at the top, everyone loves you, and then when you take a defeat, everyone's on your case telling you to retire. That is the case with Joe, but he's determined to get back in the mix, and obviously with so much heavyweight action in Saudi Arabia, he doesn't want to miss out. Well, prior to his fight with Zhang, he was the guy that everybody was... Uh, thank you. He was the guy that everybody was avoiding. And then he fought Zhang twice. Uh, first fight, people, you know, he got, he got obviously the bad cut. Um, and we don't know how that would end up. But the second fight was a very emphatic win for Zhang. And, uh, and you think he was coming off of a really good win. First bloke to stop, stop uh, Joe Parker. Now Joe Parker's fighting Zhang, having got a couple of wins under his belt. And that just shows you, you know, with these big guys, how dramatically it can change. So he want to get back in the mix. He want to make have a better year than the year of the snake, because the snakes and ladders balled was last year. He wants to, you know, make 2024 a, a year where he re-establishes himself. And he's got a, he's got a tough fight kicking off with that. Is the Dubois rematch uh, like realistic? It's another it's another fight to be made, isn't it? It's another great fight to be made. Um, just sort of rattling off a couple of names on the rest of the card. Nathan Heaney, um, do you think he, a fight in Stoke is ever possible? We know Brad Paul's a tough opponent in front of him. Look, he's got a tough fight. And, you know, Brad, he's got a fighter that um, is probably in the same position Nathan is when he fought against uh, Denzel. Because he was a big, you know, a lot of people made uh, Denzel a big favourite, but Nathan boxed extremely well. Um, took the fight to Denzel and I thought won it in good style against a world-class fighter in Denzel, who gave the world champion a, a real run for his money. And, uh, you know, he's got ambitions to challenge for a world title at Stoke. We've got everybody on board to make it happen, but he's got to get through this fight first of all, which is a tough fight for him. I think one's 18 and one, and the other one's 18 and 0. So between them, you know, 30, was it 35 wins and one loss? Um, Dennis McCann, I mean, I've only got to go. Sol Dakers on the card. I mean, Liam Davies, the whole card's brilliant, isn't it? Well, we're blessed with super bands and weights. And Liam's uh, he's the European, British and European champion. He's got a tough, tough fight. Um, you've got um, Dennis and Brad um, fighting each other. Two Queensbury fighters again. It's, you know, they're really competitive, competitive fights. Real competitive fights. Off the back of uh, Monday's press conference, Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou, um, when the uh, dust set and obviously the end of the day happened, obviously you had your little dinner, which we will talk a little bit about next to Frank Smith, I see. Um, but just a, re a reaction on the press conference as a whole, another one that's gone down really well. I thought it was a great press conference. 
for a great show. It's a it's a fabulous, you know, main events are very intriguing. It's a yeah, you know, it's a fabulous fight. Um, be interested to see um, how AJ fares with him, with Nagano. You know, Nagano is a, a tough, tough customer. He can punch. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. And the undercard's fabulous. The fabulous fights on the undercard. Um, Anthony Joshua said that every opponent that he's stopped, in, uh, every opponent he has in common with Tyson Fury, he's stopped. Um, is it bad for Tyson necessarily if uh, Joshua goes out and puts in an emphatic performance over Francis and Garner? Look, if he wins, he wins, and he, at least he's got he's, he's seen him in action, whereas Tyson never got to see him on that. Tyson had an off night. And finally, saying all that, you know, Tyson, if he beats Usyk, then that 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 what he's that statement he made is going is knocked into a cock hat, isn't it? Um, so we'll see. Look, we know that business and everything comes together, and, and, and you make you want to work for the best opportunities, and that's what Turkey's doing. But I suppose this time last year, yourself and Eddie had never been in the same room. I think maybe he'd walked past a, a restaurant before, but now working together, a handshake on stage, agreeing to do Queensbury versus Matra. Is there anything that you're surprised at by the dealings? He's spoke, he said, look, you're never going to be best of friends, but says how he actually enjoys dealing with you, quite gets on with you. I mean, what's your side of it all? Yeah, it's, look, look, when things are working for both sides, it's brilliant. Well, let's hope that's how it continues to be because if we can keep putting these events together then that's great for boxing great for the fans and more importantly well more importantly great for the boxing boxers i should say so let's keep doing that and uh we'll see where it all pans out hopefully uh, it will continue and we're, uh, we as i say we've got our fingers crossed but i'm looking forward now to something that was a bit dropped on my toes, this five against five. Yes. Um, but you're but up for it, right? You've got the be- you were the one that I articulated the million best. Yeah. I tried to do it a few years ago, so we're more than up for it. So we get our fighters, our respective fighters uh, picked, and I think between us it's going to be something very, very competitive because none of the fighters want to let down their respective teams, and we certainly are competitive people. So... Um, yeah, I'm looking. I really am looking forward to it. His Excellency Turkey Allo Sheikh came out, and obviously he likes the big spectacles. Uh, on the week of the Day of Reckoning, he uh, enjoyed how much attention the photo of yourself and Eddie got together, and that was put, sort of one of the reasons behind doing the five v five. He's also referenced. I mean, the the fight's called Knockout Chaos. Joshua and Garnu, looking back at old boxing games in the past and everything, almost feels like you know we look back at the press conferences, the ring, the music that yourself and Eddie came out to. There's the fun aspect to it as well right yeah of course you've got to have some enjoyment out of it yeah. i mean you know it is it is, it is but it's enjoyment and then come the night of the fights it's you know it's serious 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 uh, business and you know certainly everybody wants their guys to come through and do the business but we're in a position with this thing where it's five fights and unless there's draws then one, one of the one who hits who gets the free fights is the is the is the, the winner and uh, has the bragging rights. Joseph Parker, someone that you mentioned previously. Now, obviously, he faced a knockout defeat to Joe Joyce, and then Gilles Zhang came out and put those two devastating performances in over Joe Joyce. That fight, how do you see that one going? A real, real good one. I think it's a real tough fight, but you know, Gilles done everything that's, that he's been asking. I mean, everything, and Joe's on a real run. You know, he's looking. He's actually boxing better now than I think I've seen him fight. So it's a very in, intriguing and interesting fight. And the winner of it will become the WBO interim champion and the mandatory challenger. So after the big fight on the 17th, we'll, there'll be some decisions made about mandatories and so forth and rematches and whatever else it must be, it might be. So all these guys are jockeying to get into position to... Uh, start you know, getting a crack at, crack at the respective titles. Tyson Fury deep in camp over in Riyadh. We understand, obviously, he needs to be better than last time out, but I suppose people saying the same about Alexander Rusik. Now we're a couple of weeks away, I suppose about just over a month away now. Um, how do you envision that fight going? Look, I'm not changing my view from day one. I've always felt that Tyson has the beat in the Rusik, and that's how I still feel about it. 
Um, Philip Hergovic, uh, Luis Ortiz returned last week uh, in a small fight. There's been a little bit of talk online about Hergovic and Ortiz being a potential fight for Saudi Arabia. We know Hergovic is in the mix back again. IBF number one. Are you able to sort of give any more on that front? Is that potentially something in the works? Not at the moment. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, just a few more from me. Carl Froch came out and just basically uh, said that yourself and Eddie Hearn will just do anything for money at this point. Care to respond? Oh, is this the man who wanted to fight Conor, Mc Conor McGregor? Uh, was it? Did he want to fight Conor McGregor? For money? Or oh, because he was his mate? For money? Yeah. We'd do anything for money. What? So we will make fights that the fans want to see for money. Yeah, I suppose he's right about that. That's the business we're in. It's called professional boxing. Schmuck. Um, just two more from me. Uh, we saw, obviously, something came out on Boxer's side regarding uh, legal situation and Mazar Majid. And have you got any comments on, on the mm -hmm. uh, Mazar Majid? Obviously, the Pakistan cricket fixer um, who was in prison. Apparently, he was big in, in making a deal with Sky Sports and Boxer. Have you no idea. Nothing to do with me, and I don't want nothing to do with it. Good luck to them all. Fair enough. Um, just finally from me, Frank, a big year inbound 2024. Fans big are excited. 2023. Bigger year in well, 2024. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And for you, you might be able to go and buy a new pair of shoes. Well, I like these shoes. Nice. I've got to be got to be strong in myself. Yeah, now. But, I mean, it, uh, it, but it does bring out that, that side of you, I can see. What, the, the feminine. Yeah, but we got the Stone Island on. Oh, yeah. So we're still violent and feminine. That's oh, yeah, that's it. You're a violent feminist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, good yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Final message to the fans, a big year in 2024 boxing-wise. Lots in Saudi Arabia and hopefully lots in the UK as well, because that is important. Well, we have. I mean, we've got a great show on the 10th of February with Hamza, you know, <laughs> heading the bill with Hamza Shiraz against Liam Williams. We've got the Magnificent Seven. All of our guys are out. We've got some fabulous fights in Saudi. It doesn't get any better than this, but it will be. And it will be getting better on the outcome of all these fights. And then we're going to knock, knock the shit out of Matram on that five-on-five. That's my title for the video, Frank Warren. Thank you very much. I'll wear a whistle next time. Oh, <laughs>